Assalamu alaikum, everyone. So I was nervous a little bit before this, so the speech was really good for me. But what really helps me when I'm nervous is to know that I'm among my family members. And this is a true family, so alhamdulillah. Um, today, inshallah, if you guys don't know, my name is Aqib Sylvester. You can say Aqib. They ask me if you want to say Aqib or Aqib. You can say both. Um, I'm part of the DC, community, uh, DC uh, community and the Virginia community and the world community. I'm going to claim all. And um, today I'm going to make an assumption. It's an assumption that hopefully I'm going to be proven wrong today. And it's just an assumption. I don't want you guys to hold it against me. But I'm going to start with a huge assumption. And I'm going to assume that majority of you guys, 90% of you guys, have not considered a sign that is always following you, a sign of God that's always with you. I'm positive that 90% of you have not appreciated something that you neglect every day. Something that is important to your visual communication, your visual perception, your mobility. So today, inshallah, I want us to take notice of it. If everybody could stand up for me, please. I want you guys to look to the floor and say hello to your shadow. I literally say hello to your shadow. Hello, shadow. When is the last, you can sit down now, you can sit down. <laughs> when is the last time that you paid attention to your shadow? When is the last time you reflected on your shadow? It's with you all the time, but have you really paid it any attention? Have you reflected on it? Have you considered it? What is your shadow? What is that thing called your shadow? What is this clicker thing? <laughs> so, <laughs> so your shadow in physics is basically a shadow is a dark area where the light from a light source is being blocked by an opaque object. However, shadows are not two-dimensional. It's three-dimensional. It takes up the whole volume. It's not just a flat panel or a flat plane. And within visual communication, shadows are very important. They are very important. As a matter of fact, I want you guys to stand up again, <laughs> look at your shadow and say, shadow, you're very important. <laughs> Why is your shadow so important? Oh yeah, you guys are going to be physical today. We're going to do some physical activities. Why is your shadow important? Well, here's an example. If you look at these two balls, these two spheres, which one do you think is closer to the man? Let's get a consensus. Who thinks the blue ball is closer to the man? Two. Who thinks the other one is further away? Well, it was a trick question because they're both at the same distance. But it's shadow that helps us to understand this perception. Because if I was to change it slightly again, you would think the blue was further away. This speaks to the importance of shadows. Shadows help with our visual perception. Shadows are everywhere. You cannot go anywhere on Earth without shadows. It affects your perception of death. This is a painting on the street of a sidewalk to make you believe that they're standing on something that's suffocating based on the perception of the shadows. It affects your perception of distance. It affects your perception of space. We judge not only distant space, but f texture and form because of the shadow. So shadows are very important. But how does it do this? How does it do this? Well, within visual communication, shadows convey certain things. Visual communication is basically the conveyance of ideas and information based on what we see. 
So the utilization of this, be it line, shape, textures, form, values, we get certain meanings and certain interpretations and inference of what we are seeing. For example, using hot alone in certain shapes, you may think something is hot based on the color. Oh, based on the, the coal and blue and the color of the lines, we may think something is cold. This is all part of visual communication. And these things can be used to convey certain things. For example, this is an exhibit where the artist is using trash and, and garbage to make certain shadows of real figures. So shadows are important. And the way it does this is through the anatomy of the shadow. It's basically breaking down into cores, reflect, form, and a cast. These are the elements of what makes a shadow a shadow. For example, the core is basically the core aspect of the shadow. Then we have the reflective part, which is like a little bit of the shadow that's being reflected by the light. Then we have the form. This is the shadow that tells us the properties of the object. Then we have the cast shadow, and this helps us understand how tall something is or how the volume is being taken, taken up in space. And all these things together help us to navigate the world in 3D, to make references about what we see. Is it farther? Is it closer? Is it hot? Is it cold? Is it tall? Is it heavy? Is it small? Is it spooky? <laughs> so shadows are very helpful to us. In other aspects, Shadows have a spiritual overtone to it because shadows point to light sources. Shadows tells us where the light is coming from. Be it in the headlights or the sun or this projector or this mute. Yeah. Shadow signals light sources. It tells us where the light is coming from. And like I said, this has spiritual implications of it. How so? Well, in the Quran, God says in chapter 13, verse 15, he said, to God prostrates everything in the heavens and the earth, willingly or unwillingly. Everything in the heavens or the earth, willingly or unwillingly, and so do their shadows in the mornings and in the evenings. In chapter 16, verse 48, it says, Have you not seen the things created by God? Have you not seen with your perceptions, with your reasoning, the things that you could sense? Their shadows surround them right and left in total submission to God and willingly. In chapter 25, verse 45, it says, Have you not seen how your Lord designed the shadow with intention? Design means intention, it was purpose. That's why we say design. If he willed, he could have made it fixed, then he would have designed the sun accordingly. So shadows teach you something about our relationship with God. Shadows teach you something about your relationship with God. It's both a sign and a proof. And what do I mean by that? A sign is something that represents another reality. It's a reality that represents another reality. For example, a stop sign. What is a stop sign? It's really just an octagon with red shapes with white marks on it. That's the reality of that, that, that sign. It's a physical reality. However, the other reality that it represents is the command for you to stop. When you see that stop sign, that reality represents another reality for you to stop. Right? It's also a proof. What is a proof? Well, a proof is just a reality that's evidence of another reality. That's what a proof is. It's reality that's evidence of another reality. For example, that stop sign is proof for another police officer to stop me if I go past it. <laughs> it's proof because that reality was oh, disobeyed, was violated. And he could point to that same sign and say, look, you have violated the law. So proof is just evidence of another reality. So how are shadows a proof and a sign for us? Well, they are a sign of God's governance. Shadows are a sign of God's governance. And they are proof of God's control. So it's, it's, it's a sign that God is the Lord of all of us, 
and it proves that God can control everything. Shadows are everywhere. You can't escape shadows. And if everybody can, stand up again. Okay, I'm t- I know you guys are tired. Sit down. I know you're getting tired. Look down at your shadow and ask your shadow, when are you going to leave me alone? Because shadows are everywhere wherever there's light is. And you're never alone without your shadow. In the morning, your shadow is there. At noon, your shadow is there. Sunset, your shadow is there. Even at night, your shadow is there. You're never alone with your shadow. And this is a sign of God's governance. Because that reality, the constant presence of that shadow, is a sign that God is omnipresent, that he's always with you, that you're always over his lordship, (laughs) under his lordship. God is omnipresent. God is always aware. He's unavoidable. There's nowhere you can go that God does not own. There's nowhere you can go that God does not own. And you cannot escape his lordship. You're willing and your will is because he wills. You go astray because he wills it. You're guided because he wills it. You believe because he wills it. So we cannot escape God's governance. Therefore, like that shadow is always underneath you. It cannot avoid you. It's a sign that you're always underneath him. You cannot escape his governance. You cannot escape his lordship. We are always under his control, under his government. Shadows also is a proof of God. How so? I'm not a scientist. And if there's any scientists in here, please let me know. Please correct me. Is there a way we could alter visible light so that it has no shadow? Is there a way we could change light to somehow not have or exist without? We can't. We cannot control or change light, visible light. We cannot. Light and shadows don't deviate from God's design. It doesn't. This is proof of God's control. And because of that submissive role that shadows have, we do it for practical reasons, we use it, and we do it for entertainment. Because the shadow is so submissive. It's devil deviate. And some of the practical reasons is like the sundial. The sundial. We measure time based on the, the rotation of the sun and the shadow. The visual communication of that shadow tells us what time it is. Imagine if the shadow said, you know what, I don't feel like moving today. <laughs> now you're always late to a meeting because you're thinking that it's the same time all the time. The shadow is never deviating. It's always in submission to God. And because of that, it's consistent, it's persistent, it's predictable, it's submissive, it's beneficial to us. us. We move forward in our lives because of that guidance and because of that mercy of the shadow. Using the shadow to get astronomy and time and the season and other calculations. And this is proof of God's absolute control. Shadows are a proof of God's control because we can't change it. We can't change it. We cannot change visible light without shadows, and we can't change the light to act without any kind of shadows affecting us. And this is a spiritual implication again. Because shadow enlighten us about our relationship with God. Since shadows doesn't deviate in their behavior, and since light is a symbolic Symbolic for guidance, based on Quran chapter 5, verse 17, 16, and 24, 35, and 24, 30, 35 again, I duplicated that. <laughs> it means that God is in absolute control of everything. It's a shadow, it's a shadow voice. God is in absolute control of everything. He controls, this is what I want us to understand, inshallah. He controlled believers and he controlled disbelievers. He controlled believers and he controlled disbelievers. God says in chapter 13, verse 31, even if the Quran caused mountains to move or the earth to be teared asunder or the dead to speak, they will not believe. God controls everything, all things. He is 
it is not, is it not time for the believers to give up and realize that if God will, he could have guided all the people? The disbelievers will continue to suffer disaster as a consequence of their own works, or disaster will strike close to them until God's promise is fulfilled. God will never change the predetermined destiny. Chapter 13, verse 2. God is the one who raised the heavens without pillars that you can see, then assume all authority. He committed the sun and the moon running, each running for a predetermined period. He controls all things and explains the revelations that you may obtain certainty about meeting your Lord. God controls everything and he knows everything. Chapter 24, verse 35. God is the light of the heavens and the earth. The allegory of his light is that a concave mirror behind a lamp that is placed inside a glass container. The glass container is like a bright pearl-like star. The fuel thereof is fuel from a blessed oil-producing tree that is neither eastern nor western. Its oil is almost self-radiating. Need no fire to ignite it. Light upon light. God guides to his light, whoever he wills. Be guided. God thus cites the parable for the people to reflect, to think. God is fully aware of all things. So shadows... Remind us of God. It's a sign and it's a proof of God. It's a sign that of God's governance over us and it's a proof of God's control over all things. Our shadow reminds us of that. So we all have to praise God that he blessed us with a shadow and we use it to navigate life and to know him better. Thank you, alhamdulillah. Thank you, Akib. Thank you for that speech. I got to answer questions, right? Yes, you have to stay there. Um, any questions? Any questions? Okay. Mashallah, thank you. Um, do the different material element uh, sub objects produce different types of shadow? Do they have a different... Um, characteristics and from the studying those shadows can they reach to some uh, you know uh, vice versa uh, you know research that what type of uh, you know uh, material were there well I can't speak from a, a scientific standpoint you know as a visual communicator and a visual designer shadows do light interact with materials different ways yeah and how that life is, how that light goes through an object or bounce off an object, yeah. we perceive that as shadows. Yeah. And that communicates to us if things are glossy, if it's, it's rough, if it's furry. Yeah. So we can definitely tell we do this all the time. Even so, we just don't know we do this. But subjectively, in our heads, we are looking at things and we evaluate in the shadows. Because most people don't understand, we are always in shade. We are always in a mixture of light and shadows. And we call that shade. And we use that to navigate the world. So we're always using shade to understand what things are and what things are not. So your shadow does tell us a lot about the properties of an object. Uh, because uh, there is a verse in Quran that God uh, says, go to the shade of three different densities. Yes. So it, it is a three different materials that they have a different shades. So um, I thought maybe that verse is referring to something that the different mater material elements, they have different uh, I, shadows. I don't personally uh, understand that particular verse as different materials. I understand that as intensity of, because I know there's a Quranic verse that says, you know, in the hellfire, there's a, there's a shade that doesn't bring in any comfort at all. Yeah. So it could be darkness, how much light a person is getting, how blind they are. It could be some symbolic meaning to that because anything descriptive, any descriptive um, element in the Quran about heaven and hell is the allegory. So I kind of interpret that from that standpoint of an Thank allegory, you. yeah. Thank you, Elena. I have a comment. Yes. Um, Moshe, I really enjoyed your speech. It was very nice. Um, it actually made me think about how, you know, all the time there's darkness and light. And to me, that's very symbolic of the fact that, you know, always God's point of view is going to be presented in this world and always the devil's point of view is always going to be represented. Mm -hmm. And obviously God, you know, he's, he gives light and he's the truth. And so it was really nice to see that comparison also with something else and how it's always there, you know, submitting to God willingly. Yeah, that's Thank true. You. That's a good point. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Okay, we'll be right there. <laughs> Sana's run.
<laughs> All right, no drat. Yeah, Islam, like, mashallah. Oh, sorry. I, don't, I couldn't understand that question you just asked. I, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I got confused. I don't know what that means. <laughs> um, mashallah, Elena also, uh, something similar to that. I have a, it just, you know, kind of when I was looking at the shadow, and the reality is that shadow occurs when the light is blocked by any other object. So. <clears throat> And symbolically, God uh, is the light, and the darkness is absence of light or God's light. And we have to remember, um, when the light is blocked by an object, we should not be in the shadow of that object because they are blocked by the light <laughs> of God. That's all I'm saying. Like, need to stay away from those shadows um, who who are blocking, basically, light of God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Thank you. we have one more. Did you? We have one more question, OK? Mr. Yeah, yeah, this is the last one. Mr. Ghaffar. Bismillah ar rahim Is it OK? OK. Uh, I thank you very much for this beautiful presentation. Alhamdulillah. Uh, one of the qualities of the shadows that after your speech came to my mind is this, that equality that God wants to prove it to us through the shadow. There is no difference between my shadow and your shadow by the color of our faces. There is no fat or tiny. God can make it for you during the time. So you cannot trust on your personal body when God guides you to look at your shadow, you can see that sometimes it's tall, yeah, sometimes it's short, yeah. sometimes it's fat, sometimes it's narrow. Yeah. So it makes you to know that you don't have any, anything to do with your garbage that you showed over there mm. that becomes a powerful body yeah. on the wall, or vice versa. So this is one of the things that I picked up from your speech, and I thank you for it.